Good afternoon now, everyone. Uh, glad to be here uh, today. As Jackie mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, tetracurb concentrate and tetracurb organic, which are our rosemary-based um, insecticide miticide. Um, again, I'm Brett Cranston, the Pacific Northwest Sales Manager, and uh, Michael Hall is our new technical director um, for our team. And so he's also going to be talking about going over some of the efficacy data we have on our product. And in particular, a lot of this data is going to be applicable to hop growers, both for mites and aphids. Um, I do just want to give a shout out real quick. We do have some awesome giveaways going on over at, their, at our booth. So head on over there. Um, there's a little banner there to click on to get signed up for um, these giveaways. And I'll work, we'll select them here um, at the end of the conference on Friday. So make sure to get your name in there and we will um, I'll work to coordinate with you guys to get these awesome prizes dropped off for you guys. So to start off a little bit about Kemen, um, we were founded in 1961 by RW and Mary Nelson. Um, it is a continually, it has continued to be family owned and operated. Uh, the top left photo there in the middle is RW and Mary and their um, two children, um, Chris and Libby Nelson, and they are still very active in the business. Chris is our current CEO, and Libby is our head of general counsel. Um, we currently have more than 500 patents and applications, um, and our annual revenue exceeds 900 million. Um, we're currently working to transform the lives of 80% of the world's population with our products and services. In the past 20 years, we've looked to, our vision was to reach half the world's population. And in 2017, we actually realized that goal by reaching more than 3.8 billion lives um, on a daily basis. So that's really incredible. And we're continuing to grow that even further by reaching 80% of the uh, population with five or more of our products and services. So here's kind of a quick video about um, Chem and Crop Technologies and what we're, um, kind of what we're about and what we're looking to do. Cheers to the unsung heroes of the world, the growers and farmers our planet depends on. You're meeting the challenge of feeding millions upon millions. Chem and Crop Technologies shares your mission and passion. Every day we're unlocking the power of essential oils and botanicals, innovating, researching, and testing new ideas, and sharing with customers to produce the best performing product at the field level. Every day we're providing growers and farmers with environmentally friendly pest control and plant health technologies that help improve your yields and crop potential. Every day our products are used to eliminate insects and mite pests, to kill fungal and bacterial diseases, to prime the soil for improved plant growth naturally and sustainably. Better for the environment, better for your health, and better for your budget. Because the world depends on you, we also want you to depend on us. So let's raise a glass of everything you're growing. Cheers from some of your biggest fans. And here I'll turn it over to Michael Hollar, again, our technical service manager. All right. Thank you, Brett. Um, yeah. So like Brett was saying, um, I, my name is Michael Hall. I just recently joined with Kemen um, here as the technical services manager, and we'll kind of jump right into our product portfolio. Um, so starting out, we do have a miticide and insecticide a tetracurb concentrate and an organic version, the tetracurb organic. We do have a soil amendment, uh, Valina, and we also will have some new fungicide bacteria side coming soon. Um, if you have any other questions about the Valina or the fungicide bacteria side, please uh, send those over to Brett. Uh, this, uh, this presentation will focus mainly on the tetracurb and the tetracurb organic. All right, so we'll jump right in here on tetracurb. Uh, it's a botanical oil-based biopesticide. It's going to be 25B exempt. It's emulsifiable concentrate, and it does act as a contact insecticide. It's broad spectrum, and it's going to control a lot of our insect pests whenever we look at uh, hops as a general um, plant. It's a foliar spray uh, labeled to use on all crops, not just hops, uh, with a zero REI and a zero PHI. So when we look at tetracurb, tetracurb is made up of what we call our smart blend. It is an active ingredient of rosemary oil that's been mixed with an emulsifier and a soap. 
Our other product is going to be Touch Curb Organic. The difference in the two is going to be the still with the rosemary oil um, with the emulsifier, but the Touch Curb Organic, you'll have to use an OMRI approved adjuvant uh, to mix with that product um, as the soap that we have is not OMRI listed. Uh, our products, again, require minimal PPE, they're MRL exempt, and no phytotoxicity has been observed. So for our modes of action, uh, for the rosemary oil, the rosemary oil acts as a paralyzer, uh, suffocant, and desiccant, and it also has some repellency effect. That botanical oil targets an octopamine receptor in the mites and causes them to avoid the the area, as well as paralysis and suffocation. Our emulsifier uh, allows for a uniform uh, spray to make sure that it uh, touches the entire plant surface and gets uh, throughout the plant to provide maximum uh, efficacy. And then the soap also acts as a disruptor for the, cuti the cuticular waxes of the insect, allowing the rosemary to quickly penetrate and induce water loss in mites. So you get a quick knockdown and it also fits into your IPM programs, and it also has a low uh, chance for the pest to develop resistance to our products. Some features that we have uh, and that we really like to show off with our products is they are food grade horticultural oil. So that's one of the main things that our product is different from others. We do have a zero day PHI again. Um, we are exempt from the MRLs and we have not observed sensory concerns. So you're not gonna taste rosemary or anything when you apply it to something like apples or hops. So one thing that we always wanna keep in mind whenever we are applying pesticides in general is this resistance management. We don't want our insects that are in the field to develop resistance to the insecticides that we're using. Uh, so we want to switch to some of these products that are low risk for resistance. So Tetracurb really fits in and can be incorporated into a grower's IPM program as a way to reduce the risk of pesticides uh, or the pests developing resistance in their fields. I wanted to touch on the packaging sizes that we have. Uh, Touch Curve does come in a one gallon bottle, uh, 2.5 gallon bottles, and it also comes in a tote for larger growers that are looking for a, a bulk order. Uh, we are also registered in 20, more than 20 states, including Washington, Idaho, and Oregon for hops. Our recommended rates are generally this 0.5% rate uh, for a moderate infestation, but with our application and our label, it does allow a grower to have a broad spectrum of rates. So if you are looking to do an immediate knockdown, you have a high infestation level, you can go all the way up to 2%. Um, and we also recommend that growers use it as a preventative as well. Um, if you want to apply before you really start to see any of your mites or your aphids. All right, so I wanted to kind of jump right into some efficacy trials that we have with two spotted spider mites. Uh, the first one that we will start with is going to be an efficacy trial on hops. Uh, this initial trial was done in Grandview, Washington. Um, it was sprayed at a half of a percent rate, uh, which is, again, that moderate level of infestation. Um, it was applied with a backpack sprayer and was done as a compatibility test to begin with to make sure that there was not going to be any issues with incompatibility. Uh, then it was sprayed on about 10 acres uh, with an air blast sprayer. So if we'll go to the next one, we'll kind of see some of the results. As you can see, just from the one application, we were able to get 70% reduction of mites uh, after 24 hours. And then over a four day period afterwards, we still were seeing less than 50% of the mites that were in the field before. Um, so Tetracurb was very effective at controlling mite populations in um, hops. Another efficacy trial that we wanted to go over is another mite trial with two spotted spider mites on marigold over a six week period. This uh, trial was infested each week, about 10 mites per plant um, and was sprayed each week as well. We tested different um, concentrations of the product so that we could see which product or which concentrations were gonna work best. Um, and if you go next, we'll see the results of that. 
As you can see with Tetracurb, we were able to reduce the percent of mite damage significantly. Uh, the mite score was also reduced significantly, as well as the egg score, um, just with that 0.5% rate. Um, so that's why most of our recommendations come at that half of a percent rate whenever it comes to two-spotted spider mites. Here's a great picture um, of that trial. You can see on the left, the untreated, uh, the damage from the two-spotted spider mites, and you can see that it's significantly reduced on the right with the tetracur being applied. Um, at, we had a 90% mortality without harming the plants. As you can see, there's no phytotoxicity there. So another plant that we have done trials in significantly is uh, strawberries in California. We wanted to show this as uh, mainly to show the field data of the product on two spotted spider mites. So as you see, this was a 19 day trial. Uh, it was completed in winter strawberries and we did our tetracurb concentrate and our tetracurb organic and compared it to a negative control, so untreated. And we'll look at the results here. As you can see, two days after application, we're looking at a significant reduction of the two-spotted spider mite adult count. So you're looking at a 92% reduction with the tetracurb concentrate and an 86% reduction with the uh, organic product. Uh, this is extremely significant, but also we saw a significant reduction over time as well. Um, so as you can see, the, the populations doesn't jump back either. We also were able to completely eliminate eggs after single application, even though that pressure was super low, we still saw 100% uh, reduction for both products for egg counts. So the next part that I wanted to focus on a little bit is going to be our efficacy trials with aphids. This first data that we have put up here is uh, from a bioassay that we conducted. Uh, we looked at tetracurb concentrate uh, at different rates over a uh, course of uh, time. So what we look at right here where that circle is, is you're going to have 24 hours after um, treatment. And we were exhibiting over 90% control at that half of a percent rate up to 92% mortality. Um, even at the 0.25 rate, we still were seeing up to 90%. So very effective on potato uh, aphids in uh, bioassay. Another aphid that we looked at was the soybean aphids. As you can see in a bioassay that we had a percent mortality at the 1% rate, uh, upwards of 90%. Um, after just 24 hours, which is extremely significant. Uh, I did want to uh, talk about some grower success that we've had in aphids as well. Uh, in hops, we've had a, a grower using our product and exhibiting success in Moxie, Washington, and they were using the tetracurb or um, concentrate for those uh, aphids. Another trial that we are very excited about, uh, it was just uh, finished and completed. Uh, you guys will be kind of the first uh, audience to hear about it is going to be our greenhouse trial on apple trees to look for efficacy of the woolly apple aphid. Um, we did a greenhouse trial and a field trial. This first part is really focused on that greenhouse trial. Uh, there was three applications done at weekly intervals and compared to a positive control that we know works for the woolly apple aphid. And we used our tetracurb concentrate as well as the tetracurb organic. And we did the uh, four different rates for those counts for this greenhouse trial. So if we want to go forward, we'll see the results of that. As you can see, we're very excited about this. Uh, for our tetracurb concentrate with the woolly apple aphids, uh, just the three days after treatment one, we're looking at an 89% uh, reduction. It also, after the third application, we were able to see over 90% control with that tetracurb concentrate with the woolly apple aphids at the 1% rate. 
The next one we're also super excited about uh, is our Tetra Curb Organic was also able to perform at that high of a level. We're looking at over uh, at a 0.75% uh, rate. We're looking at 73% reduction at, after just the first application. And after three applications, we got up to 92% reduction. So this is great for an organic grower that's looking uh, to use a different product that's uh, listed for the woolly apple aphid. Again, like I was saying, our second part of this trial was going to be done on the field, uh, out in the field. So what we did was we looked at um, the products being applied on July 8th and then a couple additional applications after that first week. And we took that data. Uh, you'll see on the next one, we used a 64 fluid ounce rate, which is going to be our half percent rate and um, compared it to the positive control. As you can see here, we had up to 79% in the field and 73% for the organic in the field. This reduction was after two applications of the product at that half percent rate, uh, which is very significant, very great that we were able to transfer the results from the greenhouse trial that was more of a controlled environment and show that the the products still performed the way that we would want it to in the field. Um, so we're very excited about these uh, results. Again, if you look at the data here on that blue time frame, that's going to be six days after the second treatment um, and 13 days after the first treatment. So with both of these results, it was after two applications of Tetracurb. So our conclusions are listed right here. We were successful in aiding in the control of woolly apple aphids in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we also, again, this is a great alternative biorational approach for minimizing these pest pressures in uh, apples. Again, we would recommend that these products be used, the concentrate at a 0.5 to a 1% rate, depending on what your infestation level is. And for the organic, we're recommending about that 0.75% plus that adjuvant um, in order to see success. Uh, we also would recommend that you do at least two applications about a week apart. So thank you. Um, we have some questions, or, or if there are any questions, please feel free to ask, and I will turn it back over to Brett. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Yeah, so definitely uh, let us know if you have any questions. Um, again, here's my contact information or Michael's contact information. We're here to help you guys integrate um, some of these biological products um, as effectively as we can. As we, you know, we've heard over the presentations, there's been a lot of um, restrictions coming down the pipeline for synthetic chemistries and what can be used, when it can be used, it's being limited. So we're here to help you guys, um, especially with our products specifically. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, also, if you're in need of any literature, um, please reach out and I'll be happy to pass that um, information along to you guys um, to have, make sure you guys have it available. Um, and finally, again, don't forget to stop by the, our virtual booth and get signed up to win some cool prizes. So with that, are there any questions out there for us? Wonderful, thank you both for um, a, a very informative presentation. Um, it looks like we do not have any questions at the moment, but let's just um, hang tight for a second and, uh, and see um, if any come in. Uh, here we go. So K Ford is asking, are we required any certifications to use your products? Uh, no, you're not like, uh, I believe just like your standard, um, like applicators license will, will be suitable. Um, I'd like uh, Michael meant touched on, it is minimum PPE. So, and we have not seen any I guess, adverse or risk to any employees that have sprayed it or been in contact with the product after application. So um, I don't see, I guess, special certifications beyond just your regular applicator's license. Okay, great. Um, if there are any more questions, um, we'll just uh, wait uh, to see if anybody's typing it in currently. Um, but if there's any more questions, uh, Oh, here we go. Uh, Jared Favilla is asking, um, or he said he missed what, um, I think 
Uh, it says adjuvant, but I'm wondering if it's adjunct. Uh, sorry, I'm not as familiar, spelled A-D-J-U-B-A-N-T. Um, so maybe you two will understand that better than I do, but he missed uh, what uh, you recommend using with uh, tetracurb. With tetracurb concentrate, uh, an adjuvant isn't necessary because we formulated the adjuvant into the formulation. However, we have heard some growers utilizing an additional adjuvant um, when they're using it with in combination with some other products. Um, and I guess that's going to be, what do you feel most comfortable with? What are you seeing? Because again, this product is very much a coverage product. So if you're not getting the coverage, you're not getting the efficacy. So if you have an adjuvant that you really like because it gets a, it's spreading the product really nicely, um, and that's what you you want to see if you can get more efficacy, more coverage with the product, um, yeah, make sure you're not seeing any adverse effects, and I'd say run with it. Um, and then the, with the con the tetracurb organic, an adjuvant is necessary, and we just recommend um, whatever organic Omri approved surfactant um, that you are currently working with or you prefer. Um, that's the one we recommend you you stick with and go with because that's the one you feel most comfortable with. We haven't seen any um, that have caused any issues. I would definitely stay away from like uh, some sticker adjuvants um, as you know, you'll get those oil droplets to more stick to the plant, which could cause some phytotoxicity and we've seen it in some tree fruit. So definitely make sure you're using a spreading adjuvant rather than a sticking one. Okay, thanks. Um, well, let's just uh, wait one more minute to see if anything else um, comes through or questions. Okay, I don't see anything. Um, well, I just wanted to say thank you again um, to Brett and Michael so much for this great presentation and um, for what looks like some pretty, um, pretty nice prizes. So thank you uh, both for providing those to our attendees and um, good luck to everybody for, um, to win one of those. Um, so it sounds like you just go over to the trade show booth and um, put your name in. So uh, we do have a few more minutes, um, just in case anyone is tuning in particularly. Oh, Anne, do you have a question? I just wanted to note that in the chat box, there is a message that apparently the link for the raffle is giving oh. an error notice. Has the raffle already ended? It has Brett, not. You know? I'll, I'll get with the team it, um, and, and make sure that's up and working as soon as uh, we drop off here. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Yeah, thanks for catching that, Ann. Um, had my eyes on too many things. So, okay. Well, um, again, uh, it sounds like that will come through in the, in the chat box um, for the right link to uh, check out um, the opportunity to win some of those prizes. And um, again, uh, just in case anyone is tuning in, uh, particularly for this presentation, I'd hate to start early and have them uh, miss the beginning of it. So uh, we just have a few minutes until that starts, uh, five minutes um, for one final um, coffee run or um, bio break from all that coffee, um, or uh, just to check out uh, maybe Kemen's um, booth um, at the trade, virtual trade show.